African Americans before 1619 America. Luso Africans. Black Portuguese Jews. 1543 in Japan. In August 1619, 20 to 30 enslaved Africans, Israelites, landed at Point Comfort, today's Fort Monroe, in Hampton, Virginia, aboard the English privateer pirate ship White Lion. 76 years earlier, the ancestors of these so-called Africans, Israelites, would be participating in the Naban trade. Luso Africans in Japan. 1543. The Naban trade or the Southern Barbarian trade period can be traced from the arrival of the first Europeans. There were Portuguese explorers, missionaries, and merchants who arrived in Japan in 1543. Naban art, colonial Latin America through objects. Number two, Naban screenfolds exemplify the deep connections of the colonial Americas to early modern Japan. Portuguese Jesuits and the merchants arrived in southern Japan in the mid-16th century with commodities from India, Europe, and the Americas, and with hundreds of Luso Africans. The foreigners were called Naban, barbarians from the south, Luso Africans. Luso Africans. Luso Africans are people of mixed Portuguese and African ancestry who speak Portuguese. These Luso Africans, or Portuguese as they called themselves, were commercial middlemen distinguished by the language Portuguese and later Criollo called Portuguese Lanzados language Criollo Creole Luso Africans Luso Africans in Japan, 1543. The world and a very small place in Africa. A history of 
globalization in Nayumai, the Gambia, fourth edition, Donald R. Wright. Page 67, Christian and New Christian, Portuguese and Luso-Africans. These were Portuguese, a number of whom eventually being new Christians or conversos, mostly Sephardic Jews, forced to convert to Christianity and then persecuted by old Christians. Before long, sexual liaisons between these immigrants and Africans produced a group of Luso-Africans. Luso-Africans. Edited by Daniel Orells, Reminder K. Bambra, and Tessa Reynon, African Athena, New Agendas. Classical Presence, Oxford. Page 150. The vast majority of the Sephardim in Senegambia in these years were male, but the absence of Jewish women also naturally led the male Sephardim to form unions with Joloth women. There's evidence of marriages between Joloth women and Jews and of the children of these marriages eventually forming an important part of what became known as the Luso-African. National Museum of African American History and Culture. National Museum of African American History and Culture. The National Museum of African American History and Culture, NMAAHC, is a Smithsonian institution museum located on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., in the United States. It was established in December 2003 and opened its permanent home in September 2016 with a ceremony led by President Barack Obama. The NMAA HC is the world's largest museum dedicated to African American history and culture. It ranked as the fourth most visited Smithsonian Museum in its first full year of operation. The museum has more than 40,000 objects in its collection. Although only about 3,500 items are on display. The 
a 350,000 square foot, 10 story building, five above and five below ground, and its exhibits have won critical praise. National Museum of African American History and Culture Dedication Ceremony September 24th, 2016 National Mall in Washington, D.C. Luminaries from the political, business, and entertainment world attended the opening ceremony. Dr. Jill Biden, first Lady of the United States, Joe Biden, President of the United States, 46th, Bill Clinton, 42nd President, Laura Bush, former First Lady of the United States, George W. Bush, 43rd President of the United States. Michelle Obama, former First Lady of the United States. Barack Obama, 44th President of the United States. Laura W. Bush, former First Lady of the United States. Council Member of National Museum of African American History and Culture, N-M-A-A-H-C. Representative John Lewis, Georgia. Robert De Niro, Angela Bassett. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, Vice Chair Smithsonian Institution, Board of Regents, President Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III, Pastor, Absinian Baptist Church, New York City, President, SUNY College at O. Westbury, Dr. David J. Scorton, Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. John G. Roberts, Jr., Chancellor of the Smithsonian Institution, Chief Justice of the United States. Kenneth I. Chenault, Campaign Chair, Advisory Council, NMAAHC. Linda Johnson Rice, Co-Chair, Advisory Council, NMAAHC. Oprah Winfrey. Will Smith, Stevie Wonder, Patty LaBelle, George W. Bush, Barack Obama. Denise Graves, American Opera 
singer. The dedication ceremony concluded with the hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing. God of our weary years, God of our weary tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might led us to the light. Keep us forever in the path, we pray. These our feet stray from the place, our God, where we met thee. These our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Lift every voice. Wikipedia. Lift every voice and sing. Lift Every Voice and Sing is a hymn written from the context of African Americans in the late 19th century. The hymn is a prayer of thanksgiving as well as a prayer for faithfulness and freedom with imagery which evokes the biblical exodus from slavery to the freedom of the promised land. The NAACP began to promote the hymn as a Negro national anthem. Despite the fact that it was a solemn occasion, the event was celebratory and light-hearted. National Museum of African American History and Culture Dream a world a new the African American experience and the shaping of America. National Museum of African American history and culture. The National Museum of African American history and culture, which opened in September 2016, is the realization of the centuries long dream of creating a public monument to the vital role African Americans have played in shaping our nation. Dream a World Anew uses subjects and stories from this unprecedented museum to take readers on a journey through the African American experience. A map from the book Dream a World Anew of the Transatlantic Slave Trade. This is a pie chart showing destinations of enslaved Africans, as we are finding out these are actually Jews, in North America, 1619 to 1865, Gulf Coast, 22,000, Northern U.S., 27,000, Chesapeake, 129,000, Carolinas, Georgia, 211,000. The Portuguese first landed slave seeking expeditions along the northwest coast of Africa in the 1400s. With time, they moved south and then east, all the way to the Blight of Benin, at Elmina on the coast of Ghana. In the region, Europeans came to known as the Gold Coast. They initially sought to establish a trading base near the gold mines 
of the interior before their attention turned to enslaved Africans. Other European nations, Spain, France, Holland, and England, did the same from the 15th through the 18th centuries, creating some 50 slave trading ports and many other outposts. The oldest surviving edifice among the slave trading stations built to process the African captives is Elmina Castle. Built by the Portuguese in 1482, it was designed to face the sea while its rear walls ran alongside a sizable settlement of Akan speakers with established trade networks. The presence of the large square structure then called Sa Ohe Damina St. George of the Mines declared to other Europeans that the Portuguese had come. Okay, let's not forget, this is the history of African Americans. The Portuguese engaged in cultural interaction and intermarriage as well as trade with the Africans. Establishing unique communities. This new group of Luso Africans, people of Portuguese, Sephardic, and African descent, Jews of Africa, often converts to Catholicism. They were forced to become Catholics because of, of the Spanish Inquisition, who still practiced some elements of indigenous African religions formed a powerful merchant elite and was some of the first African-born people, Ladinos, to travel freely to the Americas. Known as the Pagamosas, important people in Asia, we are going to go over that history soon, to the Portuguese, they spoke a syncretic language, sometimes called Guinea speech or Negro speech a form of broken Hebrew. By the early 1700s, Luso Africans numbered several hundred at Elmina, and there were hundreds more at similar forts down the coast to the Congo and Angola. As the African trade boomed, these Creoles, as they were known, swelled the population of major European capitals, London, England, Paris, France, the Netherlands, and Germany, Spain, Madrid, Italy, European capitals, approximately 10,000 black people, both slave and free, of differing hues. 10% of the population resided in Lisbon in the 1550s. This was the start of a cultural and genetic fusion that spread all over the Atlantic world for four centuries. These Luso Africans, Creoles, Sephardic Jews with Jews of Africa, spread all over. The Atlantic world and all the capitals of Europe and on this side of the world, the Western Hemisphere, New York, Florida, the Caribbean islands, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Mexico, Central and South America, Peru. They spread all over both sides of the Atlantic world. This story is to be continued.